Greetings, gamers. You might have noticed that over the weekend we've been hit by kind of a monsoon, a flood of gaming news, if you will. Tons and tons of new gameplay footage and announcements have come out. And honestly, that's due to multiple events happening. But the event I want to talk about today is Summer Game Fest because it's a newer event. It's only been going on for three years. And I think a lot of people are still confused on what exactly it is and how it compares to E3 and stuff like that. So we're going to break it down today and kind of hit you with some info. The first Summer Game Fest took place on May 1st, 2020, and it was created by Jeff Keighley, who you may know from his show Game Trailers TV over on G4, if you're old like me, or you may know him from the Game Awards if you're less old, that's a little more current. So Keeley created Summer Game Fest as kind of a response to E3 being canceled due to the coronavirus. He wanted a place where viewers could come together and still see, you know, video game previews, new trailers, new gameplay and stuff like that, and enjoy it from the comfort of their home with their imaginary friends that they were developing due to the COVID loneliness. And it worked out well, it really did. And here we are three years later, Summer Game Fest is still going strong. Now I wanted to break down two components. First there's the showcase, uh, that's what you saw, anyone could tune into that. You could buy tickets, it was at uh, the YouTube Theater down in Inglewood, so you could actually buy a ticket to that and go see it live in person if you wanted. Or you could do what most people do and just stream it on YouTube, Twitch, it was even on TikTok. So yeah, it's very accessible. And then the second component to Summer Game Fest is Play Days, which is only open to journalists and creators. You have to be invited, and it's a physical location that you can go and get hands-on with some of the games, see some new previews, stuff like that. And we're going to talk about that part second, but I am going to use chapters in this video so you can skip ahead if that's what you're interested in. Okay, let's start with the Summer Game Fest Showcase. This is a roughly two-hour show. As I mentioned, it can be streamed on all major platforms. And this is the place that developers can announce new games. This year, we got Prince of Persia Lost Crown. They can show gameplay from games that have already been announced. We got a, a huge glimpse at Mortal Kombat 1. Or they can do things like announce DLC for an existing game. Nick Cage actually showed up to the event live in person uh, to talk about his role in the Dead by Daylight DLC that's coming out. That was interesting. Fun fact about that, not scripted. Well, it's, it's a museum of horror, right? Yes. And when I make movies, one of my favorite genres is horror. They just let this man come out and ramble about his appearance in the game, saying pretty much whatever he wanted to say about it. And you know what? If you're Nick Cage, you've earned that. Let the man cook, as the kids are saying, right? Now, the showcase is interesting because it faces competition from both the PlayStation and Xbox showcases that are happening around the same time. But apparently there's enough news to go around. As I mentioned, there's new gameplay from, from Mortal Kombat 1. There was also Final Fantasy Rebirth showing gameplay. Plus, we got the release date for Spider-Man 2 and confirmation that Venom is in the game, which is kind of crazy, especially since the PlayStation Showcase had like just happened. You would have think they would have debuted that information there, but Jeff Keighley must have used some kind of witchcraft to get that, uh, that exclusive info dump on the Summer Game Fest Showcase. Well, what I would personally like to see, just for the sake of organization, is the Summer Games Fest Showcase could be a place where any developer could come and show off their stuff, and then we hear more about it in, like, the individual showcases, the PlayStation, Xbox, even it would be cool if Nintendo did a thing, and they all talked more about whatever got showed off at the showcase, just so I could see everything in the showcase and then be like, oh, Xbox showed off this, they're going to talk more about it at their event, their director, their showcase, or whatever they want to do, and fingers crossed. Crossed, that is what Summer Game Fest will evolve into, uh, but you never know. I could be totally wrong. Now, I want to talk about the second component of Summer Game Fest, and that is Play Days. Now, unlike the showcase, which is open to all, you have to have an invite to attend Play Days if you're a journalist or creator. Uh, it is at a physical location, uh, not as big as E3, and I'm not allowed to tell you where the physical location was. I was invited, uh, but the form they have you fill out says specifically, you can't tell anyone where it is, but it is a physical space where you can go and walk around. Uh, they have a lot of booths set up where you can check out the games uh, kind of on an open floor. And if developers want a little more room, a little more intimacy, they have uh, kind of closed off spaces that are behind closed doors or backstage or whatever they call it, where you can go and check out games without all the hustle and bustle of being on the main floor. 
As I mentioned, I did get to go there. I got hands-on with Under the Waves, uh, Mortal Kombat 1, of course. I played a little bit against Sohinky, and I played Throne in Liberty, a, a new MMO from Amazon, and we're going to talk more about all that stuff. And we did a vlog over on the Ogsog channel. There'll be a link to that in the description. There are other games there that I was kind of bummed I missed out on getting an appointment. There was Alan Wake 2 was there, and Armored Core 6 actually showed something off that was not shown at the showcase. Unfortunately, um, that stuff was not not playable so it was just a demo I talked to some other people it was just a demo that you watched you watched someone else play through it it was a fun event and it definitely did trigger some nostalgia to people running around trying to make all their appointments at E3 you definitely saw some of that happening at play days as well um, it is smaller than E3 it's significantly smaller again I can't I can't say where it is but it's not you know the, at the convention center like E3 used to be with just the huge amount of floor space and everything it could be in a bigger space next year, though. You know, E3 got canceled this year because PlayStation, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Ubisoft, and probably some other companies all said they weren't attending, and that kind of collapsed it, and it just kind of imploded on itself. So now I, I imagine that more developers are looking for a place where they're like, hey, I need somewhere where I know I can actually go and show off my game, and that's not going to, you know, cancel two or three months before the event is actually supposed to take place. Next year, Playdays might have even more interest from developers looking to show off game so they might have to get a bigger venue or increase the area that they rent out for that venue because right now this is kind of the reliable event that you know journalists and creators can go to get their hands on the actual games one thing i really did like about playdays is that it was actually much easier to find your appointments like because it's a smaller space like there's not too many places where your appointment could be hiding and you didn't never have to run 15 minutes across the convention floor to get to another space. It's much less crowded. So yeah, that was great. And you know, if it gets bigger, that could go away, but I'm willing to sacrifice that convenience of having it being in a smaller venue. If it means that we get to have more games at the play days event. I guess we'll see how it all pans out next year. So that about wraps it up. As you may have noticed, this is a little different than my normal content, if I even have such a thing as normal content anymore. I'm just kind of in an experimentation phase, seeing what I like to do, seeing what works. Uh, little explainer vids like this. I've obviously been doing some sketches. And yeah, I'm just throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks. Uh, so let me know, give me some feedback if you liked it, if you didn't, if you'd like to see more of another type of content, happy to, uh, to have that conversation and explore more with you there. Anyway, uh, if you want to see one of those sketches I was talking about, you can click over here. Uh, Pokemon Angry Dev Room is the, is the latest sketch. And then over here uh, will be a link to the Ogsog channel. If that vlog is out, uh, that might be a link to that, or it might be just a link to our most recent video uh, over there with me, Jovan, Sohinki, and Mari. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this vid, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.